you so much for um, joining me today. I know you had a long day and everything. So, like, how's your day been going? Listen, release day is always busy and exciting, and I'm on the wine already. <laughs> <laughs> are you, you know, are you, just taking okay. it all in. <laughs> are you back? Are you in America? Or are you back home in South South Africa? I know you were. Yes, back. I'm back back in Los Angeles. I got back on a couple of days ago now. So I'm not even like recovered from jet lag. In fact, <laughs> what is jet lag? I don't know what that is. I don't, I have a child. I don't get to have that. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> before, so, yeah, I no. get, <laughs> before I even get to Lucifer, I wanted to uh, speak about uh, like the scene in South Africa right now. Like there's so many like South African women in, that killing it in cinema right now. There's <laughs> we got <laughs> <Alyssa> <laughs> in <laughs> underground. There's so many Netflix um, originals coming out. I just want to know like your opinions about that right now. So how Listen, is it? My country is beautiful with the most beautiful. There is, you know, Africa as a continent has obviously its struggles, it's, you know, poverty, but people forget there is this plethora of like wealth and not just talking monetary wealth or, you know, I'm talking about like, like wealth or like talent, you know? And it makes me so proud, like to see Tuso up there, like shining. Do you know what I mean? Like I was supposed to try and connect with her before I went to South Africa, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit her up now that I'm back and once I'm all settled. But you know, my friend Paul Tusi, Kim Engelbrecht, uh, you know the kids from like Blood and Water. Like it, it, there's so much, and I am currently working on. Uh, getting a show so sold right now that I created that will shoot in South Africa about <laughs> South Africa because I want to bring it back home and I want to first of all employ as many locals as I can I want to shine a light on that plethora of of talent that we have there um you know and I want to work back home. Like I've been dying to do a project back home. So it, it, it makes me so proud, really. Like if one of us is winning, all of us are winning. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can you see like South Africa cinema really starting to dominate over here in like in America in the next like five years? Totally. Like, it seems like every show that is getting put out from South Africa is just like hitting. Yeah. And you have to think, you know, I really do um, think having a streamer like Netflix um it's, you know it helps because one it 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 is a platform a streaming platform that is in like i think 167 countries around the world and i imagine that they want to cater to as much of their audience as they possibly can um so for me showcasing highlighting africa in general and in particular south africa is 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 good business i always it wonder like <laughs> i always wonder if people in your like your position like come like from a small town and like we had like an nba star like when growing up and we're like yo when we we're little kids you used to be like yo we want to be just like that like do you ever like does that ever like cross your mind like yo like like what i'm doing on screen could really like change somebody's outcome like giving up on their dreams or not you know in the beginning of my career i didn't think that way because i was honestly just trying to like make it you know i was trying to do my thing um i will say being on a show like lucifer and having it be exposed to so many people um when I go back home and I see kids who are like yo you're from my neighborhood like exactly that like I didn't I didn't know growing up that I could do this for a living this was not an option for me I was born in 81 like people who look like me you were not on tv <laughs> and you certainly didn't go over to Hollywood you know to become an actress so it uh it was the furthest thing from my mind, but now when I go back, I do, I, I do feel a, the sense of responsibility I have to, um, to not just like inspire people in like a kind of superficial way, I guess, but like to go back home, 
right? So I work with this charity, Earth Child Project. They're amazing. And I tell my story. I tell them, like, I grew up 15 minutes from here. Like, I had no idea that this was something that could happen to me or for me, that I could be blessed in this way. So um, I try and encourage those kids to think further than just, like, their neighborhoods or their home situation or like to dream. You know, I didn't know that I had permission to dream. Was was there ever a person like an actor, a musician, or even an entertainer like you watched like growing up or listened to that you like, it made you like, yo, I'm gonna go all in on my profession so I can be kind of like where they're at? You know, I didn't discover acting like as in that I could do it for a living till I was 27. So I, that's when I started. So like I say, growing up, I didn't think of it like I'm going to, like you have to, like for me, I was in segregated schools. I was, do you know what I mean? Like life was just very insular. I didn't even realize that the world wasn't segregated the way South Africa was. I thought that was how the world was growing up. So n- no, I did not have that person because I was like well that's just it didn't even cross my mind but I was always a clown the kid and you know the classroom like she talks too much like you know (laughs) she's always like performing or doing some weird show for my family at you know every kind of family gathering um but I would say as I became you know as I, when I started acting, I started looking at uh, the work that I was attracted to, the kinds of roles and the people and the, you know, um, and I would say I followed like Viola's career, you know, a lot. Um, and I was always inspired by how uh, um unafraid she was to take on you know these roles and how raw you know she was um and then I have to you know coming here it's like I have to the the all of those women who came before me who opened doors for someone who was like from another country to walk through like I have to you know say thank you because I I certainly didn't face a lot of the challenges that you know, they did when I, by the time I got here, uh, which was 10 years ago. Um, but yeah, I, I remember, I remember, I just like movies that Viola was in, I would always be like right there. Like, I mean, talk about a scene stealer in doubt, you know, like one scene, but. No, she's, a, yeah, she's a different, I want to, um, you just said you started acting when you were 27. Like I have friends that like, are like 24, 23, 25, and they like, they feel like if they don't have their life figured out, like now they're like, they're not going to go anywhere. Can you kind of like speak on that? Like what made you like, yo, I'm going to like start at 27. I'm going to get where I'm at. You know, can you like kind of speak on that? So I, I have a high school degree, a diploma. I did not go to college. I was not one of those kids that had it figured out. I didn't even know what I wanted to do. Um, I was a smart kid. I wouldn't say I was like very, very academic in that way. Um, I got good grades. Uh, I really had to apply myself. Um, And typically when I really cared about something, um, I was into it. So for me, I had a midlife crisis, I would say at like 25, where I literally went through that, where I was like, oh my God, what am I doing? I know I'm not supposed to work in an office, but you know, I was always just very good. People always offered me work. Um, You look like you'd be good in sales or you should try IT recruitment. And I did all of it. Um, And, but I never, uh, the itch for what this performing sort of, but like never left me. And I was doing commercials here and there. Um, And, And then someone gave me the opportunity. It was like a combination of like tenacity, opportunity, hard work, um, and luck, and luck. And and I was working as an IT sale, IT recruitment uh, consultant when I was cast in my first role, which was a comedy (laughs) series in New Zealand. 
and I quit my job and and that's like giving up you know regular pay and all that kind of stuff and I was like I don't care I was a jump and the net will appear kind of you know a girl so there's a there's a lot of faith I think that goes into it but I will say it's okay to not have life figured out at that age it really is there are other things that are important to know from a young age you know like um you know financial education and that kind of stuff you know like don't get yourself into trouble financially in your 20s that you're paying for that stuff in your 30s and 40s and 50s there's credit cards and shopping and all that kind of stuff like don't do that but where you're supposed to be your life purpose it's totally fine to not have it figured out. I didn't have it figured out and I turned out. Okay. Um, I, you know, I turned out. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> uh, so I want to get into Lucifer. Cause like, I watched a couple episodes this um, for part two. I'm like, yo, this is like brilliant. But um, how would you like describe Mace and Mace's storyline for season five, part two? Oh, it's, painful (laughs) um it's painful and I think it's gonna piss a lot of people off because she's forever in pain you know um but she is she is wanting a soul and in trying to acquire that soul she is then forced to feel and deal with all these very human emotions that she's familiar with when she sees it in other people but not herself so you know rejection that you know with Eve and there's I don't want to spoil it for you but there's some there's some traumatic things that happen in the show um uh in the latter uh, few episodes of that second half where you really kind of see her crack open emotionally and then it's like is it really worth having a soul because this does not feel good um, but, uh, it's, it's, she is, I would describe it as peeling back like the layers to really like get to the, the woman, you know? Yeah. I know traditionally like demons don't have souls, but it seems like Mace is like, I, it seems like she's been connecting with humanity, like as a late, like she, like usually when she would kill somebody, she's not doing it. Yeah. Everything. So like if Mace does get a soul, what would you what would you think like her starting like would be? Well, that's called growth, my friend. I <laughs> would think that we're all capable of it, you know, as people, and that is, in itself is very human. But um I don't know. Maybe she has one and she doesn't even realize it. Maybe the not killing them with the blade is the actual soul, is the you know, um I, I think it's a fine line with her because when you, um, you, 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 you have to explore her um, discovery of humanity and human feelings. But at the same time, you can never forget that she's a demon. And I think that never leaves her. There's always going to be an element of danger, soul or not, like with this character. Yeah. In like a split second, she, she would be right there with a knife <laughs> soul or not she's like me <laughs> <laughs> so uh one of my i think it was um i think episode 10 was um you were doing the uh no scrubs the musical scene that uh, was not singing no scrubs oh <laughs> uh, really who, who was that amy oh uh, amy was singing i sang bad to the bone Oh, bad to the bone. That's cr- okay, but like, how was that like filming that like scene? Cause that looks so. It just first fun. of all, I thought it was gonna be a weird mashup. I gotta say, I was scared. <laughs> I was like, "Hey, yo, they're gonna come for us. This is this is DLC, man." Like, <laughs> like I was really, really scared. Um, you know, it came out brilliant though. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, and I, it was fun. It was fun. Um. And, you know, and good for Amy for, you know, kind of, it's, it's, it's singing on our show is really scary. I, I've done it a few times now. So I like, I feel comfortable a little bit, but 
that was fun. I mean, I was like, let me channel some Rihanna, some Grace Jones, give me the Shaka Khan hair. Like, let me just get into character. My husband was like, I saw that man licking you <laughs> on the table. <laughs> he was like, you are in character, all right. I'm like, yeah, that's right. You know, got to sell it, honey. <laughs> uh, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I was um, only in that, like, one little scene. Could you see yourself doing, like, Broadway musical in the future? Oh, my gosh. I don't know that I have the, um, I don't know that I have the pipes for Broadway. I mean, I shouldn't say that. You should never say never. Um, but I, I, let's start with off-Broadway first. <laughs> you know um yeah maybe let's start there and we'll we'll work our way up <laughs> <laughs> so how, how do you feel about like the mason god diam dynamic in like part two? Oh, i loved that dynamic i love that it was even though she is this like fierce badass will tell Lucifer to fuck off in like a second. If he's acting up with God, there's like a, there's, you know, a respect. Even for her, you know, she's like, I cannot not um, be enamored with his presence and, you know, what he means to the universe and all of that. Um, but I think it was like, the, those scenes with Dennis were like really sweet. It was a lot of fun to shoot. And very vulnerable for her as well, you know? Um, I think when he says that you're perfect the way you are, it's like, <sighs> you know, because that confuses a character like me. He goes, well, what the, you know, like now what am I supposed to do? Um, but I, I think, yeah, it's an interesting, it was an, it was an interesting dynamic. It's essentially like good and, and evil, you know, heaven and hell. Um, and, uh, I was really happy I got to work with Dennis. That's three. We've seen Lucifer make an appearance in the Arrowverse, uh, for DC. Would you be interested in playing, like, a superhero role in your future? Well, if Marvel or DC movies want to holler at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here, I'm available, and I'm in fighting shape. Um... <laughs> Listen, I would love it. I would love to do a Marvel or DC feature. I mean, that's kind of like bucket list for me. Um, they better be calling soon because these hips, you know, <laughs> they get <getting> old. <laughs> would there be a certain character you want to play in the, uh, any, any franchise? I don't know. I know Poison Ivy is being talked about right now. There's, I don't yeah, know. I think I'd, I'd want to find, you know, I would want to find like an underdog, like someone that maybe isn't as well known, but is like really like, like Maze wasn't, Mazikeen wasn't as well known. Do you know what I mean? In the DC world, it was like Vertigo and Sandman and that kind of stuff. But she's become through the TV show, like a known comic book character. Um, so I think like something, like someone that's like not, you know, as no, full disclosure, I'm not a comic book nerd though. So I don't know a lot of people. Um, I know the obvious sort of heroes that everyone knows, but I'm not as well-versed. I, again, grew up in South Africa. We did not have comic books. We had no money for that. <laughs> <laughs> We were outside climbing trees. <laughs> <laughs> um, another question is, did you, did you ever hit up Holly Berry to ever do a movie? Would you guys, like, what's up with that? I feel like you guys would make, like, like twins, like, twin sisters in the dope action movie. Like, Oh, my God. <laughs> Listen, Holly is so beautiful and talented. And it's funny, that comparison really started in New Zealand. Um when I moved there and uh, Jamie Foxx has the stand-up, but where he talks about going to Cape Town and he like, I drop my wallet and I look up and a pack of Halle Berries are coming at me, you know, cause we're, <laughs> cause I mean, we're so mixed over there. Um, but 
she, I would listen. Of course I would work with Halle Berry. Of course I would want to work with her. She is talented and stunning and all of those things. Um, and it's funny when people, uh, I, I had a guy once argue with me in Whole Foods that I was Halle Berry. <laughs> and, um, yes, argued. And, and I was like, sir, I have an accent. Like I'm not her. And he's like, you're just putting that on. And I wanted to say to him, listen, I do, I am not blessed in the top part of my <laughs> anatomy. Like I could, I could flash you right now, sir. And I could let you know, I am not Halle Berry. <laughs> um, uh, but I didn't, I kept it PG. I just said, oh, trust me, I'm not her, you know? And he was kind of pissed. He thought I was being a snob and I wasn't going to sign an autograph <laughs> for him. Looking back on that, would you just sign the autograph and be like, yeah, okay, and move on with your no, name? No, I would never <laughs> sign someone's name. No, no. Well, now I can, now I have tattoos. I'd be like, see, I'm tatted up. Like, <laughs> What has been like the craziest like, like fan like interaction with somebody like in the street? Um, I met someone from Japan who trapped, was, didn't track, was, had basically followed me. I was doing the convention circuit and they were following me from convention commission. It was amazing. And then, uh, so sweet. And then they came running up to me in the street and they had my full face tattooed on their- That's so dope arm it it is so flattering but i'm also i go are you still gonna like that in like 20 years <laughs> like do you know what i mean like i mean like i love meryl streep and viola dibs i'm not putting their faces on my skin <laughs> um but but no it was it was very sweet it was just kind of trippy for me to actually see that you know it's like whoa that's a dedicated fan right there <laughs> what upcoming projects do you have first I know you just spoke about um you're pitching a show or pitching something to you're pitching something but is there any other um projects you're working on yes so I have an animated series coming out I think it will be next year um it's called Captain Full and it's for Netflix oh dope and um it's a very raunchy risque not PG show. <laughs> and my character is South African in the show, which is cool. Um, and it's, it's really fun. It's kind of like naughty, like Big Mouth, you know? Um, yeah. But it's um, these incredible creator, creators who from Norway. Um, and I've been working on that at, this, as, at the same time as Lucifer. So um, we have 20 episodes that we're doing. And um, yeah. is it gonna be like 30 minutes or like an hour? I think it will probably be 30 minute episodes if I'm not mistaken. I think I'm not sure. Animation is like a whole new world for me. The post production on it is crazy long. I had no idea it will take like up to a year and a half, two years to uh, um, edit and like put the animatics and all of the voice and all that stuff together. So, um I think it's 30 minutes and I think it would be out next year. How did you get involved in that? I auditioned. It was like my first voiceover audition. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I shot, I, sh I went and I sh shot my shot, man. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try voice. Um, and it was, yeah, it was great. I auditioned. I gave him different accents to play around with, with the character and um they gave me the most raunchiest parts of the scene, I think just to see what I would do with it and if I would be comfortable with it. And then they were like, yeah, that's our girl. <laughs> <laughs> Before I let you go, can you give like five like good pieces of advice to like actors that are like trying to be in the position that you're at? Um, prepare, you know, preparation is key. Um, you're going to be in rooms with people who are more seasoned than you, who are more talented than you, who are, you know, 
pretty or whatever that is, who have more connections, all that kind of stuff. But if you, but a lot of the times um, people don't do the work, you know? So if you've come in and you're prepared and you do the work, that is really, really valuable. Once you do book a job, show up as a guest star and know your lines. <laughs> I can't tell you how many people show up to our show have showed up to our show unprepared. And that I think is letting not just the people down who you're working for, but also yourself because you're not able to put your best foot forward. Um, work on accents, different accents, all the always have it in your, your tool belt, um, you know, cause you just never know when that audition is gonna come up for a, New Yorker or South African or, you know, British or whatever. So always be working on expanding um, yourself linguistically. What's the, oh, my um, bad, before you go, what's like the hardest accent you have to, you have done? I know you got like, you could do so many. Um, Irish is pretty hard to make you not, like it's pretty hard, it's beautiful sounding. But it's really hard to not make it sound like a leprechaun from like, um, <laughs> like, and my writing partner is Irish and he's like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, I would say like, it's a very melodic, beautiful accent, um, but you really have to work at it not, yeah, sounding um, fake, I guess. Um, uh, and then I think, uh, the other bit of advice I would give people is just to like start, you know, a lot, I get a lot of DMs about from people like, I want to get into acting or how did you get started or how can we, you know, and I, and my first thought is, well, I didn't go to social media. Like that's number one, you know, I looked and watched films and I watched TV shows and I worked in my accent and I, um, I went and I saw plays and I went and I, you know, met with, with, um, I, I don't like the word network, but I, but I got to know people in the industry so that I had an understanding of the business of acting and also the craft of acting. And they both are so equally important, um, to know, um, so just start, you know, find scripts online, start shooting stuff, like, so that you can figure out, you know, the technical stuff. Just, it comes back down to preparing, like be as prepared as you can be. Cause it's like when opportunity and luck meet and you're ready, that's when things happen. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. I know you've been doing this all day. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. Hope to talk to you soon. Yes, so nice to see you. Have a good night.